help support the companies that support our community. I just remembered I forgot to use the Forstner bit, so we're going to do that and get rid of the majority of the material inside.
So originally this was going to be a much smaller box. I was going to do the lid and the base of it out of the piece, the original piece that was on the lathe. But once I got to cutting into it, I found that really cool hole in the side of it. And in order to save that and make it look, look nice to be in the right spot, I needed to just make the body out of that piece. And then I grabbed another piece for the lid. So I just, and after I made the tenon on the body of it, went ahead and I'm just hollowing out, just cupping out a little bit for the lid and then making the recess for the tenon that's going to go into it. So one little tip too, when you're doing it, using the beading tool, you want to use that before you hollow it out. If you hollow it out and get your wall thickness down pretty thin, it, there's a little bit of chatter with it and the beading tool won't work that well. So do the beading before. On the lid here, it's still pretty thick, so I did the beading af afterwards. Um, but for like the main body on, on a vase or something like that, you want to do the beading before you start hollowing it out. After I got the inside cleaned out, I went ahead and shaped the lid and then started beading it. This is a piece of elm we got several months ago. I uh, got it from a friend in Texas, gave it to us. So it's been sitting here in the shop for a long time and it was, it was dry. But you want to definitely want to, especially if you're making a linen box or something like this, you want to use dry wood. It's elm, and I haven't turned a whole lot of it, but it just uh, has a beautiful grain in it. The beading tool works great. You just put it in a little bit of an angle and then rock it back and forth. And once you get it set and you start to cut the bead, you can look up above the cut and watch and see when it becomes round. So you'll you can see a little flat spot on it so you just keep rocking it back and forth until that flat spot goes away and it works really well so as i was saying about the cracks earlier this happened So one of them was running a little deep and it, when I started to part it off, it released and it just threw it straight up into the ceiling. But I was actually able to find it and it fit perfectly back together. So I just put a little bit of wood glue in there, clamped it together, waited a few hours and then went back to turning it. But I was kind of lucked out because I didn't have another piece of it, so I wasn't sure what I was going to do if it didn't work out, but it was all good. went ahead and parted it off again, and this time it made it. I was a little more careful this time. Got it all parted off and then turned it around and used the jaws and just barely put a little bit of pressure on it to expand it to finish off the top of it. And for that, just use the easy wood the number one hollower to just smooth everything out smooth the little tool lines out and then i beaded that the rest of that as well but before i do that i want to try out the cnc machine so i've been playing around with it practicing and just kind of putting different shapes and things in it and I know I don't have an end mill bit yet, but I have one ordered, should be here very soon. So when you see me cutting the, the circle out by hand, you don't have to do that. If you have an end mill bit, it will actually cut out the circle for you and then whatever design you want on the inside of it. So it works really well. I just, uh, my son helped me get it all set up and, and show me how to, a couple little tricks with it, but it works awesome. Um, like I said though, it, with an end mill bit, then you would, would be able to do the circle and you, it would just be perfect and you could pop it right in. Then once I got it cut out, I drew a circle around it. That way I had a reference point. Then once I got it cut out, I put a waste block on there and drew a few pencil lines so I had a reference. One of those would be close to, to my little disc. And then I just hot glued it on there and just cleaned up the edges with a parting tool. And it worked great. You, When I was doing it, I tapered it just a teeny little bit, the disc. And then so when I came over and did, the, did it on the lid, I put just a little bit of a, a taper on it as well. The hot glue works great for doing this. Uh, Double-sided tape would work well too. So 
So with this one, I did a bunch of tests. I made a bunch of bees, put them on boards. I tried putting resin on it um, and the CA. So what happens is it bleeds into the wood a little bit. So with something small like this, I, where I can't really sand away much of it because like the little antennas or the wings, they would, would get sanded off. So what I did was I sprayed it with a clear. So this is just a matte clear, you can use gloss or whatever you want, but I sprayed it with that, did a test on it, and then I used CA for it because it's such a small little little area, I could put those fine tips from the Starbond, they, they when you get the kit, it comes with these little extra tips and they work fantastic. And then I just recessed the top of the lid to fit the disc and went ahead and glued that in, just kind of, Take it slow, sneak up on it until you can get a nice, nice good fit with it. The one thing I will say is I was doing another box too and I wanted to do a, a design on the top of it after I had turned the lid, but you can do that, but you need to make sure it's sanded perfectly flat because the, the CA, or the, not the CA, the um, CNC, it doesn't know the difference, you know, if you have a big dip in the center of it or a hump in the center of it on your on your turning. But I did a couple tests with that, <clears throat> drew circles on the board, so the same size as the lid, and it works very well. It just you need to make sure that that's flat when you go to carve it out. After the glue set up, I went ahead and cleaned up that lip just a little bit, and then went ahead and finished beating the rest of the lid. I finished the whole piece with the doctor's walnut oil. And what I did is I have that little top where I use, do all my wet sanding with it. And so I just poured it over that so it went down in the top and I didn't waste any. But it's just a beautiful piece of wood. I love the way that oil brings out the, the richness of the wood. But yeah, I haven't, haven't turned much elm and I really like it. Just all the, the detail in the grain. A beautiful piece. So originally I was going to just make a small lidded box and with the lid and everything and then I found that after I got it trued up and it was just a cool looking you know kind of looks like a whole beehive or for a birdhouse or something but I love that so I wanted to keep that and that's why I had to use this piece for the lid that had that big crack in it but it all worked out glued back together well. It's uh Five and a half inches in diameter across here and seven inches tall. But I love doing like a little accent thing like that, that CNC, and that's this kind of the things I want to do with it. So I was playing around too, um, did another lidded box, and I took the lid, and what I want to do is do a design on the top of the lid. So I was doing some tests with it, drew the circles on the, on the board so I could get it to line up and everything. One thing to mention though, if you want to do that, actually like turn the lid and then put the design on it you need to make sure that wherever you're going to carve is perfectly flat because the cnc doesn't know if this is humped up a little bit or dipped down a little bit and then it won't carve in those spots so just when you're turning it make sure that the whatever you're going to carve on is perfectly flat or do a little inset you know button like this which is probably easier way to do it uh, but I wanted to do it on one I had already done so I was doing some tests with that but it was really like the way it came out the beading tool like I said uh, just rock it back and forth and it works fantastic just does a beautiful job and on that you just just sharpen the the bevel of that and it cleans it right up it's uh it works great like i said to make sure you do it before you actually hollow hollow the piece out because if it gets too thin it'll vibrate a little bit and then the beads won't be won't be nice and clean but it was a fun one all right i hope you enjoyed the video and i will well, i think we got some stuff coming up uh but i think i'll talk about that oh and i was gonna mention on the live i was gonna get the box and the the resin thing done and I didn't. They're sitting right over there. I will I'll get those done and show those. I'll put some pictures up and, and have them for the next video, hopefully. All right. All right. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.